In this tutorial, we create destructible walls with a new geometry system in Unreal Engine 5. Pew, 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 pew. We are going to create a new project. Use the first person shooter template. I like to use the quality preset Scalable. Give your project a proper name. In the editor, we want to change the asset editor open location. Open the editor preferences and change the asset editor open location. Selecting main window will open the assets in new tabs inside one single Unreal editor window. In this way we can use control tab to easily switch between tabs. The future of Unreal. Back to business. We have to activate the geometry scripting plugin. Go to editor, select plugins and search for geometry scripting. After the activation of the plugin, you will have to restart your editor. Open your content drawer with Ctrl Space. Inside the content folder, we want to create a new folder called Destructible Ball. Go into the newly created folder. There we are going to create a new blueprint class. Right click and select Blueprint class. Open all classes and search for Generated Dynamic Mesh. Select it and press Select. Give it a creative name like Destructive Destructible Wall. Blueprint Destructible Wall. For the destruction, we will communicate via a blueprint interface with a mesh. Create a blueprint interface and call it BPI Destructible. Interfaces are good to keep your code modular. After the creation of these two objects, we're going to save them by Ctrl S. Save early, save often. If you didn't know, I stream on Twitch. Follow me, link in the description. Back to our wall, we want to add a new function to our destructible interface. We will call this function destruction. This function will get two inputs. The first one is going to be a hit input, which should be a hit result. And the second one is velocity, which is going to be a three dimensional vector. In this way, we can send some information together with the interface call. We will add this interface now to the destructible wall. Control tab back into the editor. Control space to open the content drawer and open the blueprint destructible wall. Select the class settings at the top and search for implemented interfaces on the right hand side. Press add and search for BPI destructible. Select it, compile and save the blueprint we added our first interface. Now we're going to start with the geometry scripting. Open the event graph and select the node event actor begin overlap and event tick. Delete them. Right click into the graph and search for on rebuild generated mesh. We want to add this event to our graph. If you can't find the node, make sure that you use the generated dynamic mesh component. The blue pin is our target mesh. This is our dynamic mesh. At the moment it's empty. We are going to promote this to a variable. To add something to our empty mesh, drag it out and search for append box. Connect the target mesh with the append box target mesh. To change the size of our box dynamically, we want to create a new variable. We will call this variable size. And we will set the variable type to vector. By selecting instance editable and show 3D widget, we will be able to change the box dynamically in our editor. Drag and drop the size variable while pressing Ctrl into the graph. Right click the pin and break it by selecting split structure pin. Connect the values accordingly. In the last step we are going to set the 
complex collision as simple because we will deform our mesh quite a lot so we will need the complex collision to register all our projectiles. Hit compile and save. Now we can change the default values of our size vector. Set it to 100 in every dimension. <laughs> Go to the viewport and be proud on your first generated dynamic mesh. Hit compile and save. Select the dynamic mesh component and change the material to base material. Head back to your editor, open the content drawer and drag and drop your mesh into the scene. Close to your cube there is this little blue thingy. This is your handle. You can change the size of the mesh with this handle dynamically in your editor. Control tab back into our destructed wall blueprint. Right click and search for the event destruction from our destructible blueprint interface. We're going to use the mesh boolean operation for our deformation. So add the node apply mesh boolean. This node needs two meshes our target mesh and a tool mesh. Control drag and drop the target mesh variable into the graph and connect it. This node applies a bool union intersection or subtraction of the target mesh with the tool mesh at the tool transform. Keep in mind we will have to use local coordinates for the tool transform. We want to make a tool mesh with the shape of the projectile. Allocate a compute mesh in the event begin play node. These compute meshes will not be rendered and are only for computation of other meshes. You can use them like the regular dynamic mesh. We want to append a sphere to this compute mesh. Make sure to use the compute mesh as target for the sphere. The result of this will be promoted to the variable projectile. We're going to use it as our tool mesh. Control drag and drop the projectile variable into the graph and connect it to the tool mesh pin of the apply mesh boolean node. Now we're still missing the tool transform. To make our code more robust, insert a validity check of the projectile before the boolean operation. For the tool location, drag the hit pin out of the destruction event and break the hit result. Click on the drop down of the node and there you're going to see the impact point. This impact point is in world coordinates, but we need local coordinates. Drag and drop the dynamic mesh component and search for the world transform. Then get the inverse transform location. Connect the impact point to the inverse transform location. Split the structure pin of the tool transform and connect the return value of your inverse transform to the tool location. All is set up so far, but nothing is calling our interface function. Hit control spacebar and search for the projectile blueprint. Open the blueprint and you will see all the magic happens in the hit event. Drag out the flow pin of the hit event and search for the sequence node. The interface message should be sent before the other projectile code. So move the other stuff on the second pin and search for the destruction message of the blueprint interface destructible. Create some space for your node and connect the target to the other pin in the event. Connect the two hit pins with each other and grab the velocity from the get velocity node underneath. Hit compile and let's test it. As you start shooting, you will see all kinds of things happening on your wall. We don't make mistakes, we have happy little accidents. This was the secret first part on how to make the glue cannon from the game Prey, which is for free at the moment in the Epic Store. Let me feel your YouTube love. Comment, like and subscribe to help me creating more content. Now let's change the bool operation to subtraction in our destructible wall blueprint. Let's start another test. There, there, we're shooting with them big boys. Let's reduce the sphere radius to 25 in our tool mesh. And test again. Hmm, but now we see another uh, kind of happening. The balls are literally melting the wall away. But don't worry, we have all we need to change this. As you may have noticed, we have connected the velocity to our function call. Drag out the velocity pin in the destruction wall blueprint and search for length. 
promote this value to a variable and call it speed. Make a branch after setting the speed and compare the speed value with the float number. I want this only to work if the speed is greater than 1500. I also want to make the bump smaller when the speed is lower, so we are going to offset the location along the impact normal by a distance which is depending on the speed. Grab the impact normal and search for a multiplication. Get the speed value and search for the map range clamped node. We will map the speed values to a range of 25 to 0. I chose 25 because of the radius of the sphere. The default projectile speed is 3000 and 1500 is the threshold of our branch. After inserting all the values, we connect the return value to the multiplication. Now we're going to add this to the impact location. And this will be our new tool location. Hit save and compile and we can test it again. Nice, it's all working fine. Beautiful. Let's make a few more walls. Adding some walls with the new cool handles works like a charm. The balls deform the mesh, even the bouncing balls are deforming the mesh. Beautiful, beautiful. Ah, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you for watching and till the next time. Mm.